Mr. Rogers versus Dancing Faraz. And look who I have here. None other than one Mr. Sina Yagane. Sina, how are you doing? Hi, Dan. I'm just waiting for, uh, for us to tally up our scores here to see the league table on the super quiz. But in the meantime, we've got some uh, amazing Imposter Kings action happening tonight. Well, I'm excited. I hope you are too. I think uh, it's going to be a blast. We'll throw you, you. We don't have to worry. I'll tally up, tally up the scores later tonight. We won't uh, let that delay anything. Um, I really think that uh, Branch Convenience should have gotten that extra point uh, for for Rum, but that's okay. We're making allies here at the bottom, Dan. Well, I, you know, just so you know, again, folks, and and um, I uh, just want all the Branch Convenience to know if you're hanging on the line that Cena is in your corner. He's in your corner right now. Uh, and uh, so here we go. We've got ourselves an Imposter Kings match that's going to be tight and fierce. It's the upper bracket final. So that means that the player who wins tonight has punched their ticket to Sunday's finals. And not only do they punch their ticket, they keep a win in hand. This is a double elimination tournament, so they haven't lost yet. That means they can even lose in the finals once and still take home everything. So there's a lot on the line tonight. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, the winner of this match will be sitting pretty comfortably with having a loss in hand. Uh, so they would have to lose twice in the winner's grand finals, actually just the grand finals. Uh, the loser, however, will just drop down to the loser's finals where they can fight their way back up to another shot at the throne, uh, pun intended, but uh, we'll see what happens tonight. All right. Well, for everyone who is sticking around, you're probably wondering what the heck is this Imposter Kings thing and why should I donate another hour of the very finite time I have on this planet to watching it? Well, I'll tell you why. It's an outstanding game. It's a lot of fun to watch, but of course you need to know how to play. So that's why we're jumping right into a section we do every night, the how to play segment. You like that stinger, folks? So how do you play Imposter Kings? Well, I'll tell you how. You go back to the beginning of the how to play deck and you work from there. So I did one thing smoothly and I did another thing really not smoothly. So how do you play this here, Imposter Kings? Well, players take turns playing a card from their hand onto the throne at the center of the table. The objective is to be the last player able to play a card. How do you play cards? Well, cards can only be played on cards of equal or lesser value unless they have a special ability that allows them to get played on the current top card. So let's take a sample card right here. Our humble elder side-eyeing us for farting in church, I would say. The Elder, you'll note, has a big white three in the top left-hand corner. That means the Elder can be played on a card of three or less. You'll also note the text at the bottom that says you may play this card on any royalty. That means that even though the Elder is a three, it can be played on royalty cards. There are two royalty cards in the deck. They're the highest number, nine. So even though they're nines and the Elder is just a three, the Elder has the special ability to be played on them. Two of the 18 cards in the deck are these Elders right here. So there are 18 cards in the deck. It's the same 18 cards every hand. And at the start of each hand, each player is dealt eight. The remaining two cards are burned, one face up so both players can see, and one face down, the mystery card. That means the players have a lot of information about which cards are where, but that face down card throws a monkey wrench in everything. Each player also starts with a face up king card. Prior to each hand, each player burns one of their eight cards face down, and selects one of the remaining cards as their successor card, which they take out of their hand and place face down next to their king. Let's take a look at that king. There he is, staring right through us with eyes that can see right to the bottom of you. The king you can play once per hand. And when you play the king, it does two things. One is it disgraces the current card on the throne. We'll say what that does in a second. And it also allows you to take that successor card you hid out of your hand back into your hand. Disgracing a card means it flips and it has a value of one and no special properties. So it goes from something to nothing if it gets disgraced by the king or through one of the other special abilities of the cards. Here's another example here, the Inquisitor of Inquisitor's fame. And you'll note the Inquisitor is a four. It means it can be played on four or less. Two of the 18 cards are Inquisitors and it has a special ability. You may say a card name. Other players of that card in their hand must play one to their antechamber. What does that mean? Antichamber cards must be played next turn regardless of whether it would otherwise be a valid play. So a player playing an Inquisitor can guess a card in their opponent's hand, and if they have it, 
their opponent must play that card next turn. So that means not only are you getting the information about what your opponent has, you're forcing them to do something they might not otherwise do. Very powerful potential thing. A couple other cards to keep your eye on. On the left is the Fool. The Fool is just but a humble one. But if you can get it down, you can then take any face-up card on the table into your hand, which can win you a hand. On the right-hand side is the Assassin. The Assassin's just a two, but... If your opponent uses their king and you have the assassin in your hand, Stabatha gets a hold of them and it's game over for them. You win instantly. So a lot of the game is all about managing the assassin and what you can do to either avoid or use it. A couple last things to note. Games are to seven points. The scoring per hand, you get one point for winning. You get another point for winning with your opponent still having a card in their hand. And you get another point for winning without having to use your king. One last thing to note is each player this match will get one free mulligan. That means they can toss away their hand and redeal everything to both players. Once you use your free mulligan, any subsequent mulligan costs you two points. So you're going to want to conserve it and you're only going to want to use those costly mulligans if you're convinced you're going to lose a three-point hand. That's how you play Imposter Kings. Let's look at the bracket. So here you go, folks. Here's the bracket. And we are playing the Upper Bracket Finals. That's right. Both Mr. Rogers and Dancing Faraz have conquered all they've surveyed to date. They're both 2-0. And the winner, as is noted, goes through into the finals to play the Lower Bracket winner. So whomever wins tonight is straight through into the big match. But the player that loses is not out of it. It's a double elimination tournament. They're going to play the winner of the loser bracket semifinals between Juno Balls and Shane. That match is on Friday night. That would be tomorrow night. So the loser's not out of it, but their road gets a lot harder from here. And the winner definitely has the inside track for all of the glory and the Imposter Kings tournament. So let's go back to the broadcast booth and talk about tonight's matchup. All right, Cena. Well, we've got two players who have, again, beaten all they've surveyed, but they've done it in very different ways. So what can we expect tonight amongst these two? Yeah, I mean, you have uh, two people with completely different styles joining this tournament with completely different uh, experience. So Mr. Rogers, uh, as we all call him, the Terminator, uh, he is extremely kind, polite, uh, mild-mannered, allows people to take back their moves, but we know that inside he's got a heart of a killer um, as he eight zeros people across the top bracket, making their way across. Both players are eight, uh, sorry, are undefeated so far, so there's a little bit of pride on the line here. As you were mentioning, it's really important to win this game in order to be in the grand finals with a game in hand. Um, however, uh, the, the loser of this match is, is just gonna be dropping down to the loser's final, um, which is not, uh, by any means a terrible place to be. That's the benefit of being undefeated in the top bracket. Um, on the other side, we have Dancing Faros, who has uh, not played this game before this tournament, but has spent all of his dancing energy that he spends almost every weekend uh, actually prepping for this game. Uh, every time I, he joins the Discord, I'm not sure if this is a scare tactic or whatnot, but he always has another VOD of a previous game playing in the background, and you can hear him listening to all of the games. He says he goes on walks with his wife, and all he can think about is the different combinations of plays. So you have someone who has never played this game before, but is immensely dedicated in trying to make it to the finals here. There you have it. So it's going to be interesting. I know that... Um... You know, Dancing Faraz, you know, having come to this game this recently is very much a dark horse here. Again, not having that much background in the game, you know, might think that that uh, lack of experience would be a disadvantage, but he's played very skillfully, and it'll be interesting to see that contrast between one player who has a tremendous amount of experience and another who just doesn't have that much and to see how those different styles evolve. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, speaking of the players, uh, both of them have sent in their lovely uh, bios on how they prepped for this match. Mr. Rogers starting off with, my prep was to take a nap this afternoon. Well, that and transcribing all the previous games, hoping to see that unblockable Oathbound Mystic come out because just because Cena won't stop talking about it. We'll probably intentionally Oathbound into Inquisitor instead just to hear him rage on the video after. Well, Mr. Rogers, uh, let's see who wins this game. Uh, and you can see whether it's going to be a painful uh, loss or a victorious inquisit that's going to lead you to victory here. Um, you know, both of those are actually valid strategies and I've actually, uh, uh, you know, praised both of them. It just depends on the situation. But uh, I'm starting to notice a theme here of the players using this time to uh, talk 
uh, smack about how I react to certain things. Meanwhile, Dancing Pharaohs on the other side, Dancing Pharaohs has prepared this match with Mr. Rogers for with sorry, prepared for his match with Mr. Rogers by binge watching the VODs earlier today and is sufficiently intimidated by his play. Dancing Pharaoh's favorite imposter king card combo is the king's hand ability to nullify his opponent's play. Honorable mention, uh, the Oathbound Fool combo. So Dancing Pharaoh's gets to sing the chorus from the song Galantis, only a fool when he play Haze the Fool. All right, well, you guys will hear it when he decides to play it. So we'll see, um, you know, both players actually being very well versed in the advanced mechanics of the game. Can't wait to see either the Oathbound into Inquisitor slash Mystic, as well as some really strong King's Hand uh, nullifications this match. And, you know, you don't have to miss an opportunity to uh, Oathbound into the Mystic to tilt Cena. All you have to do is have the Judge-Inquisitor combo and not use it. It's that simple. Or just throw the Judge away. That's even more efficient. Yeah, I mean, that's just, <laughs> that's just salt on the wound there, but... No, it's great. I mean, this is it. I love the variety. I love it. Um, and it's okay for some people to play some suboptimal strategies to see if um, it'll pan out for them. So I actually don't know if the judge is actually good at all, to be honest. I, I just like having a strong point and sticking to it. Suboptimal strategies. There you have it. Well, it should be a great match tonight. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, a lot is riding on it. A lot is going to tee up uh, through the remaining matches Friday, Saturday, and Sunday night. We'll talk about what comes up when we get to the end of this. But it's time to step into Imposter King Stadium. So we'll be back in about one minute with the match uh, that we are seeing tonight. And it should be one fierce tournament indeed. See everyone in there in just a moment. can hear you whistling the theme song, which is great. Are we hot mic'd right now? Can they hear us? Oh, wonderful. Everyone's hearing me. I'm, you guys are all hearing one side of the story. All right, folks, we're, prepped here. we are ready to jump into Imposter King Stadium. Hey, Vivek. Uh, or should I say Sasuke, uh, we are ready to step into Imposter King Stadium. The players are seated. The stage is set. It is time for Imposter King's action. Here we go. Mr. Rogers versus Dancing Faraz. Get hype. So, all right, our players are set. You can see the cheat sheet for Imposter Kings on your right. So that is all the cards that are in the deck. Uh, in case you want to follow along, that's going to be very important here. Uh, and the first thing they're going to do is they're going to see who gets the true king. The player with the true king chooses which player plays first in the hand. It passes to the player who loses that hand, but it's by random draw at the beginning. We'll see who gets it. It can change tempo depending on how it goes out. Looks like Dancing Faraz got right. the true king there. All right, Dancing for us. Do we start shuffling and start drawing? I guess we're live, right? So we just start yep. playing. I think we're going into we'll pause for the commentary after. We really, play. really enjoy Faraz. Dancing for us. This is his third game. He's still we talking go. through. We're live, right? All right. Production quality here. All right, their hands are out. And so let's take a look what the burn cards were. The face up oathbound is, the face up card is the oathbound. The face down card is just the humble soldier. So these card hands are going to be about the value they seem to be to the two players. Faraz got the true king to start. So let's take a look at his hand to begin. And it's an interesting one. Got the assassin along with. The Zealot and Elder, the Inquisitor, Soldier, Oathbound, Mystic, and Sentry. I wouldn't say it's the best hand, but playable and with a lot of strategies that go with it. Sina, what do you think? 
Yeah, I mean, it's not the best hand um, in the world. He's got the Mystic to be able to handle some uh, card that he doesn't want to deal with, uh, potentially the Fool. Um, but we'll see what he decides okay. to use that Mystic for. He's also got the Assassin, so... Um, so he's just, uh, he's got two of the important cards there, and he can probably uh, contest this hand for sure. Sweet. All right. Yeah, this is going to be interesting to see how he wants to play it and what he chooses to keep. And so going across the table to Mr. Rogers' hand, he got the Fool along with an Elder, Inquisitor, Judge, Warlord, King's Hand, and both royalty cards. So again, a, a strong top end to this hand, but no oath bounds. Cena, what do you think about this one? Yeah, so he didn't get that oathbound because that was the accused card. Um, so that is the face up card, face up. But he's face up. I said it like eight times. But the fool is still pretty good by itself, especially with the pressure that he's able to kind of uh, enforce with the seven, eight, nine, nine. He's just got to be worried about um, potentially that mystic taking out the king's hand if uh, Dancing Pharaohs already uses his um, his entry early. Um, other than that, it's tough for Dancing Pharaohs because he doesn't want to give up who goes first here because he has an Inquisitor. The other side has the Inquisitor too. So um, it's going to be a tough one. I'm curious to see who he decides to go first with. All right. Well, there you have the two hands. So as they're picking the successor and burn cards, before we start this match, I'm asking everyone out in the Twitch chat, now is the time to get hype. Whatever emojis you can get your hands on, I want you to toss them right, into the chat. Out. Let's celebrate the start of what should be a very hard-fought match tonight. <laughs> oh, okay. All righty. Oh, uh, and you need to choose who goes first. Oh, yeah, right. Sorry. Uh, I'll go first. I'll go first. All right, so Dancing Pharaoh is deciding to go first here. Got to tilt his king there to let him know, or let us know. So Pharaoh so is going... First, he tossed the soldier. And Mr. Rogers tossing an elder. Not a surprise. He knows he doesn't really have to worry about the royalty cards unless it gets fetched with an elder. Correct. Or the, fetched the with a sentry. The thing is that the only thing that can pick up the elder potentially is that sentry. Because he has the fool. So yeah, good, pretty reasonable play to toss the Elder successor card. So let's see what Faraz has decided to successorize. <clears throat> Looks like Mr. Rogers still thinking about it. He's going to go ahead and toss that Warlord as a successor card. All right, you're up. So we have the Warlord okay. for, for Mr. Rogers, and we have the Assassin <clears throat> for Dancing Faraz. Uh, so Faraz chooses to protect will... his Assassin. I like the that Inquisitor. here. He needs to flip early anyways, but he has to get something big here with this and Inquisitor play. And I will Inquisit. Do you uh, perchance have the Queen? Well, I do indeed. Smart play. Oh, okay. He gets Let's the big... see her beautiful face. He gets I think the... you should King's Hand this, honestly. It's a good thought. The King's Hand is a counterspell card, so in addition to being an 8, you can play the King's Hand to block Alrighty. many plays by your opponent. Thank you, thank you. So there's a bunch of things set up by that. One is it gets that nine out early. Okay. It the queen will then disgrace I every will card already out, which sets up a disgrace card for mystic play. Elder. All right, and now the board is yours. So I the only downside with this is now he's given tempo to Mr. Uh, Rogers. I'm Mr. Rogers should flip pretty soon after. A judge. Uh, He's going to start okay. with the judge. And I would like to ask, do you have the assassin? I do not have the assassin. All right. So we tried the judge-inquisitor oh, combo. All righty. The reason why this is such a benefit All right. Right is that if, so that is a casual five. If Dancing Pharaohs flips right uh, now, he still has the inquisitor uh, to get rid of the assassin. Uh, That's right. All right, I will. Uh... Hmm, this is a this is a tough one. <laughs> well, that's right. Dancing Faraz is in a bind because he knows if yeah, he yeah, doesn't flip yeah. now, then Mr. Rogers will flip, making his assassin useless. And if he does flip now, then he'll just get that assassin sure. inquisited right out of his hand. Yeah, or a full play here would be great. 
but um, he doesn't have really th anything to Mystic other than potentially the Fool. That's right, and the Fool uh, play could pull the Queen play... right back in Mr. Rogers' hand. That's right. I would have liked him to actually pull the Princess instead of the Let's Queen, see. just because uh, then it would I diminish the Fool. My... Uh... Uh, oh, gosh. <laughs> Sorry, Will. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, I don't know why I'm getting so nervous. Jeez. It's all right, just the first game. Well, it's uh, yeah. <laughs> just the warm -up. I know, but the first game is so critical. It's so critical. Uh, yeah. There's um, some sort of echo happening, right? <laughs> or is that just me? Oh, okay, I see. Uh, it's just the feedback. I will. What do you think about a century play to trade for that queen, Zena? This could go really any way here. Um, uh, I'm play for for what? Oh, you can't. That's right. You can't redeem yeah, the queen okay. with a century. I'll, uh, I will. Um... Man, I am just. I'm so flummoxed right now. <laughs> Sorry, I'm like I don't know why I'm having such a hard time. Uh... Yeah. Uh... I guess I will. Uh, I think, uh, Dan, your, your audio is a little is adjusting based on uh, lack of noise. So um, uh, I think that might be. Uh, oh my gosh, I'm having setting. such a tough time. I'm so sorry. Uh, yeah, I guess I'll play. Um, is he warning me? Time warning. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah, uh, yeah, I'm getting a big warning here, so I'm just gonna, yeah, I'm just gonna go for it, I guess. Jeez, uh, um, uh, oh gosh, <laughs> I'm like stressing out now. Um, okay, uh, my bad. Uh, let's um, uh, let's uh, let's go with. Uh, uh yeah uh <laughs> uh uh, uh... <laughs> so sorry he's getting into this, this loop so in his head and he um, can't okay. stop himself um this is really funny he literally like, cannot um, stop all the iterations thinking. are just are just streaming into my brain um uh oh gosh this is bad <laughs> Uh, Man, the pressure yeah, of the winner's so, finals is really getting to uh, him. Let's go with uh, the Mystic. And uh, I will I will use her power. So I have to flip her. Uh, and then I will say that... Um, he could do the number all, four here. Uh, we'll say all... Uh, Eights are rendered useless. Interesting. Or he... All eights, sorry, lose their ability and are a power of three after they're played on the throne. So he okay. just, he, he interesting. Okay. Really interesting. Sounds like a plan. Okay. So, so he just went and whacked uh, his own eight. Yeah, I think that's a great play because he might be signaling to Will that he doesn't have the eights and maybe he'll yeah, even use it. Think about that. He might actually king's okay. hand it and that would actually just draw out an eight for a seven. I don't, I mean, it sounded like he was really stressed out, but it, this play is extremely good for him. The only downside is, is that uh, Mr. Rogers has that fool available. And okay, I think I'll let that ride. Yeah, that's, I think that's the right play, so. Okay. Wait, do you not have an eight? Ah, Mr. Rogers <laughs> just coming out and, you know, explaining just how confusing it's yeah. gotten there. Let's um But he's gonna go and reclaim that queen now. And pick up a queen. Can you at least sing the song <laughs> when you pick it up? Wait, what's the song? I'm not familiar with that. Oh, okay. It's, never mind then. <laughs> <laughs> Dancing Charles just needs that song. Oh, this is the song you sang on the stream last time. Yes, yes, correct, correct. Yeah, sorry. That's okay. Ooh. Okay, it's your turn. You can tell that Mr. Rogers it is, is serious my turn. because he did not sing. I think he's really perplexed uh, by that uh, eight gosh. century. Uh, any other se any one. other situation, Mr. Rogers probably would have yeah. sang that song. So, so Faraz is dancing. Faraz is in a bit of a bind. Uh... 
because both royalty cards are now back in Mr. Yeah. Rogers' um, hand, and he's starting to run low on countermeasures. He still has a king flip. He still has his oath bound. But that's I guess it. I'll play. He's got to flip his king at some point. That's the big thing, but he can't do it because uh, now there's two nines up across the board. So this is tough for him. A lot. I think Mr. Rogers here could simply just win by playing uh, aggressively. Uh, he's still got that oath bound. Maybe inquisit that oath bound um, and then just go for the double nine. But of course, we know what's in his hand. At this point, I'm sure Mr. I'm Rogers is thoroughly confused the queen. about what's going on. Okay. Queen comes out again. Can't believe you had a queen. <laughs> <laughs> Two queens. Another queen. <laughs> awesome. Back to back nines do not okay. initially uh, uh, ex exactly win no because he has an oath bound. Flip my king. He says he has no choice but to flip his king. He should be really careful about how he says that. Okay, and so that disgraces the queen. Especially because it's not actually true. Okay. That's I'm correct. Play he needs to get this oath bound. Okay. Uh, and I might sound like a broken record. He with, uh, the next play. But, uh, do you have an assassin? I do have the assassin. He goes with the safe route, which is just oh. getting rid of the assassin. So antechamber and assassin, there it is. Looks like the chat wants to check to make sure uh, Mr. Rogers isn't cheating by having multiple queens up his sleeve. <laughs> well, Mr. Rogers is in an interesting position. He can run, well, no, he has to be careful because this is the difference between a three and a two point win uh, about how he plays these two cards. Because That's right. he wants to put Dancing Faraz away and away where he'll uh, be bound by numbers he can't play. Actually, Dancing Faraz definitely yeah, has a path I'm for a two-point loss. He case does, case yes, that's correct. Which Looks like Mr. Rogers is playing it safe. Table. Okay. Yeah, Dancing Faraz here really just needs to play that Oathbound, uh, play a Sentry, take a two-point loss, and move on. I am going well, he to He can't play, play the Oathbound into a Sentry because he got rid of the eights. So the eight is actually a three. But you can still play the oath down in the century. No, because the, the value of the king's hand is a three. Oh, you're right. Remember? Yeah, you're absolutely right. Sorry. <laughs> Both <yeah>. eights. Uh, <laughs> it's just a weird right. situation where he has an eight. So his right play right now uh, is to uh, actually just lose three. Oath points, I think. bound. There's nothing he can do. <laughs> his best choice is to lose. So, it's to lose, yeah. Lose hard. Unless, it's unless Will decides to flip. Six. Okay. Um, so Yep, we'll... I will play a princess without using the ability. Just pushes it, and okay. Faraz is... And that is two points to you. It is three is points. Is it three? Because I have my king <laughs> still on flip. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, I guess it's three, right? Yeah. It so. sure is. So okay. it looks like they got three points there. Hard fought. Oh, man. Kind of an interesting game. play, you threw... especially with the that was, that was a tough draw that you had. Well, I had a... it was definitely a mulligan, but uh, I just didn't want to use it so early. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, bad bad draw for sure. I'm not so so sure I agree with that, Dan. Uh, I think that that was not a mulligan hand. I think that he just uh, kept on to that, that assassin for too long. But, um, you know, the other thing that we see in this tournament is that people don't use their mulligans um, enough. Uh, so maybe he's actually reflecting on the fact that earlier we said that most players just don't take their mulligan. Um, that is a three-point hand. That's not ideal, um, but it's certainly not going to destroy it's rogers in a nice comfortable 3-0 lead that's right well that's right mr rogers takes the first hand he three points dancing for us to go up three zip after hand number one so you know i think the chat is going to give you the business for saying mulligans aren't used often enough because you're someone who often refuses to use mulligans on hands that are weak uh, but i'm not I'm not in the tournament that's the difference i'm playing with people uh helping them you know train for this for these matches and you know, it's good to see the different variety, but you're right. If I was in the tournament, I'd probably take a lot more mulligans. That's right. Now, it was interesting there. I would agree with you that I actually don't think that hand of Dancing Faraz had was that bad. I think that that was a hand that could have won. Uh, I think he uh, maybe whacked himself with what <laughs> seemed like an inventive play with the Mystic, but I don't think he got a lot of mileage from yeah, I agree. So, so we got the face-up card this time being the Inquisitor, um, and then the face-down card is the Sentry, so an 8, which uh, is a powerful card. Let's take a look at the hands. We'll start with Dancing Pharaohs. All right, he keeps... What do you think, Dan? First player, King. Again, nice, colorful, balanced hand. This uh, should be a pretty even setup. He's got Mystic Princess. He's got the Oathbound into the full combo. 
He's got survivability with the Elder, the counterplay against Mr. Rogers is likely having a queen. Um, he's missing both eights, but he has the mystic, which to his knowledge could be used to actually invalidate both eights, which he doesn't have. Of course, one is the face down burn card. And it would make Mr. Rogers question him again because he did burn his own eight last time. So now he'd be like, is he doing it again? That's right. It might have been a big brain play, some 90 <laughs> chess happening. But this is a good balanced hand with a lot of options. I feel reasonably comfortable that I've got a good shot with this hand. All right, and going over to Mr. Rogers. Uh, like, so he's got the assassin. He's got a lot more flexibility here. He doesn't have the mystic, but he has the queen to kind of stop, to try to stop any sort of fool play because the queen has the unique ability of disgracing all the cards. And the, the, the fool is really good at picking up cards that aren't disgraced. So uh, we're going to see a really good bout between these two, I think. And it really comes down to how well Mr. Rogers plays that assassin. That's right. He's got a good, strong top hand uh, and top end to his hand. And with a hand like this, with a decent top end, I suspect he's going to successor that assassin and just put numbers pressure on Dancing Faraz, but we will see. All right, let's go ahead and give him the cue, and we'll see what happens. That's right. Let's see what they do, and thank you, Vivek. Oh, all right. Number Paris, who's going to go first? Uh, I will go first again. Choose to go first again. That's a good hand to go first with. He's got, you know, I think the dictate tempo with this hand. I would agree somewhat, yeah. Um, I would want to see if uh, Mr. Rogers has the assassin, and then I would want to try to flip early, I think would be my strategy. Issue is, is that he's lacking a little bit of numbers, so that's a little bit riskier. Um, but I certainly wouldn't want to hand over going first to uh, Mr. Rogers because I think he can uh, use that judge soldier battery um, pretty effectively. And I would know that he didn't have the Inquisitor, so he'd probably opt to do the judge uh, soldier. That's right. I, uh, by the way, Vivek, thanks for, uh, for going with Stabatha. That's the official name of the assassin. And uh, Dot Sam, the uh, face down burn card is the sentry. So. Taking a look, uh, Dancing Faraz was quick to make his moves in terms of his burn and successor <laughs> card. He's sure. burning a soldier, and he has successorized the Zealot, a very common conservative play for the successor. Uh, Some people it, like to just put it down because it scares them, uh, but I love the Zealot's fanatical uh, path to royalty or revolution. Looks like uh, Mr. Rogers is throwing away the Oathbound, so not going to have a safety net in place. And he's going to go ahead and tuck away an Elder for okay. safekeeping. Interesting that he would keep the Elder and not the Oathbound. So ready to go um, here. It's a little bit more of a conservative Easier play. Easier move. That's right. All righty. Um... And he leaves yeah, the right. assassin unprotected. Yeah, okay. Good. Okay. So the question is, cool. will Faraz go right uh, for it I will... with his Inquisitor? Use I the think he Inquisitor. should. A lot of people aren't respecting the assassin. We'll see if Dancing Pharaohs decides to respect it this time. Uh, and I will inquisit uh, as to uh, whether you have. Hmm. Hopefully, we won't go into that infinite loop of indecision again. <laughs> <laughs> so, so while he was looping, that's him. Uh, Pharaohs' burn card was. Gosh, the uh, let's go with the. Uh with the queen again go straight for the queen okay fishes the queen out early wants to blunt the attack right away interesting strategy again <laughs> sets up a mystic play coming off of the elder correct yeah i mean this is really strong if you have the mystic and you know they have the assassin the assassin is one of those cards where they have to disgrace a card after they play it meaning that you can immediately play your mystic afterwards all right Sorry, being told i'm a little queen? quiet i'm well, boosting that right now oh, okay <laughs> okay of course, players giving away, players giving away frozen? that they have the um, no, no. Oh, okay. that, uh, you... that they have the king's hand if Are they take this something? long. I am I am thinking about that the implications of that choice. <laughs> oh, I before, see. Before I. Um... Oh, I see. I see what you're doing here, Will. <laughs> All right. Yep. That's right, a long thought cycle definitely tips your hand that you have the king's hand. Or you could bluff it that way, too. Yeah, I was just thinking that. Tina, have you ever been tempted to bluff having a king's hand that way? It's tough because it has to be the face-down yeah, card for them not to know, and you don't ever toss Stereo. it yourself. But you could do it if you have it as a face-down <laughs> uh, card. 
In that case, I will play now, an Eldor. If you're a, a will, normally if you don't have now the it's fool, your turn. you don't do this, but you it would be really strong to play the Warlord normally. Um, the only issue is the, uh, the fact that they can Oathbound Fool and grab that, that queen. So it's the only downside with that. And so I think Will just needs to play, Mr. Rogers needs to play business as usual. And I think he pup busts out the battery here, which is judge into the soldier, um, start getting momentum on his side. Um, the one side, one downside with playing the judge, however, is that it gives them a free flip um, for either their king, um, although you can still assassinate, or his mystic with no repercussions. We'll see what he decides to do here. He could just play a raw soldier too, which would then force uh, Dancing Pharaohs to have to play one of his higher level cards. I think the soldier here is actually the right play. Just go straight for the throat, make him use that mystic, Yeah, I think you're right. Numbers pressure. Just go with the numbers pressure right here. Uh, you know, knowing that Dancing Faraz is on a clock. Uh, and you're not that worried of the Mystic. Faraz might think he might be able to take out two eights, but again, the sentry is the face down I'm burn card. Judge. The only okay. reason why I don't like this is the, the soldier would have been able to disgrace the queen. A... Mystic. I do have a Mystic. Okay. Let's see if he decides the battery here, which is my good guess. So now you can put a card into your antechamber. Any card, <laughs> except for the fool. But ooh, the soldier. <laughs> there it is. So interesting All choice righty. for Faraz here uh, on what to play, case, knowing uh, the soldier is next. I will mystic into king's hand. I think is the since is you the know now, cat's out of the bag. I will play my Mystic. He did guess uh, Mystic. And uh, I will use her ability. Lift that. And I will, I will render all eights to be useless. Or not useless, I always say that. I will render all eights to lose their ability and be a three when they're in the court. I would actually King's Hand that. That would be a brilliant move by Mr. Rogers right now, because then he would force Dancing Pharaohs to have to play something else, and then would be able to still play his five on top of that. That's right. He keeps running uh, down the clock. Pharaohs uh, is on a clock right now. It. Oh no, he should have I'm done that. I'm going to play my soldier. Because yeah. you have to, right? I have to, yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh my gosh. Right. Mr. Rogers would have had a brilliant play there, but it's tough to remember and that you can uh, King's Hand that. Name... It's a unique situation for him to do that for because he has no other aids. And I don't think that's going to be that pivotal anyway. If he guesses right here, you're correct. He has to guess correctly here to disgrace the queen and thus rendering the fool inoperable. If he doesn't guess right, it's not the end of the world, but it... it... Do you have an oath bound? Perfect. I do have an oath bound. Okay. All and right. As part of this card, he it should gets, disgrace. Goes up by two, but I also get to disgrace up the three cards Perfect. of the four. Hit all That's three of those. Correct. Bam. Bam. Uh, is he? <laughs> is he gonna leave that <laughs> elder out like there? Yeah, I guess there's, so. There's no reason second, to. I thought for a second there he's gonna disgrace his soldier. <laughs> it's a seven to you. Seven to me. This is well great. played will very well played now what's interesting is knowing both hands uh, okay, a princess at, trade uh, would really point, favor faraz to... it would except for the fact that he's got the king's hand still so you can actually cancel out the you can't use trade. it that's been mystic did uh, oh no I think i'm gonna that's true Just think about, about it for just a second both here. Full combo here. He's at least going to bring it down to at least two points uh, because uh, Mr. Rogers is going to have to flip okay. eventually. Uh, I think I will flip my king. Uh-oh. Oh, he didn't respond okay. to the assassin. I will assassinate. Oh. <laughs> okay. Uh, you win. <laughs> That's right. When they say, I will assassinate, and okay. you do not have the king's hand, then the only response is, well, I guess I will die. And that's what happens. It was just a quiet okay. Usually there's banter after each of the rounds, but he's uh, now flicking his cards out. All right. 
Yeah. You're gonna look at some of the Is cards. That the second time the Sentry's been the face down burn card. That's no. Uh... Well, that first time he bluffed. <laughs> I was sure that's where you were going. Right. Yeah, I thought. I mean, I knew you had a king's hand. Um, mm -hmm. and, yeah. Uh, yeah, I didn't. I was surprised that you uh, you put you didn't. Uh, yeah, I was surprised that you didn't succeed your assassin. That's interesting. And that's the respect that I'm talking about. People haven't been respecting the assassin as much as they um, they normally do. Uh, and I guess this is a really really painful reminder of how important that really is. And as a result, Mr. Rogers is now six to zero um, on Dancing Pharaohs, which, you know, as you know, going up six, unless it's, you're playing against Shane, uh, it's really hard to come back uh, from a six zero deficit. Um, now, again, if you're Juno Balls and Shane has five points, of course, you might win. In this case, Mr. Rogers isn't one to create any sort of mistakes, and one point is pretty easy to get. That's right. I mean, first of all, Senior, you're absolutely right that there hasn't been the respect of Stabatha that uh, one would normally associate. And I think that's been borne out by how these hands have gotten. And yeah, I mean, it, this is a real tough situation for Faraz. Those two hands could not have gone worse. At least he still has his mulligan. And yeah. so he's not going to be caught out by a bad hand so long as he uses it. He has nothing to save it for now. Uh, now, granted, it looks like he's just drawn a pretty decent hand. Uh, we'll see if he wants to stick with it, but he's got to have to beg, borrow, and steal his way to stay in this match down 6 nothing after the first two hands. Oh, my Looking... gosh. And Will was saying, isn't this the century, the second time the century? It has not been, but actually this time it is. It's two times in a row the century. Will's going to be very confused after this. Um, Will, of course, knowing mathematics, uh, knows that the more times you flip a coin, the more likely it's going to be the other side. Uh, so we'll be scared about that sentry, probably. He's just, Cena's just trying to tilt everyone uh, who Sorry. knows probability is watching the, the stream. I apologize, everyone. But uh, yes, that is pretty crazy, though. But yeah, and look at that. So uh, Warlord's the face up burn, face down is the sentry. We'll look at Dancing Faraz's hand. Assassin, Zealot, Elder, both Inquisitors, Soldier, Warlord, Queen. Actually, in looking at it splayed out, this maybe isn't that great a hand, but it's got decent survivability to bring the assassin to bear with no Inquisitor cover on the other side. What do you think, Cena? Is this a mulligan for you, Dan? You're down 6-0. Uh, I don't know. I think I'd play it because chances are on my comeback road, I'm going to get at least one hand worse than this. All right. Uh, I would mulligan it in a tournament setting, and I know you guys don't think I ever mulligan things, but I think that this is probably not survivable enough, but we'll just have to see. Going over to the other side here, it uh, looks like uh, Mr. Rogers has already put down his successor, which is a soldier. Um, we'll take a look at what his burn card is just a second, but he's got, you know, the Oathbound full combo. He's got the King's Hand, uh, the Mystic's face up. He's got a pretty good way to ensure that he doesn't get assassinated here, but he's got to move fast, and all he has to do is get one point here, so I think it would be okay for him to even use the king's hand just for getting rid of the assassin. What do you think, Dan? Yeah, I mean, you know, again, remembering that the sentry is the face-down burn card, this is not as strong a hand as Faraz's hand would imply. Um, you know, it's got a good top end. It's missing Inquisitors. It's really missing... Well, he has the king's hand as a countermeasure for assassin. You know, I, this is really going to come down to skill. You know, I, I would say that whomever wins this hand did it not because the cards favored them, but because they outplayed their opponent. That's a right. And uh, so, you know, Faraz has, has had a real beating in these first two hands. If he's going to stay in this and stay in the upper bracket, he's going to have to reach back and outplay Mr. Rogers in this hand because uh, it is a heads-up even hand, I think. Absolutely. And it looks like, uh, if I was to guess, this is Mr. No, this is Dancing Faraz who decided to go first. So I'm going to tilt his king. He had double Inquisitors. He's starting off with the first Inquisitor. His face down burn card is the Soldier. Uh, and then his uh, successor card is the Zealot. Uh, it seems to be favoring that quite a lot. On the other side here, we have an Oathbound throwaway. This is the second time he's thrown away an Oathbound in favor for the Soldier as a successor. So let's go ahead and see what they're up to. All right, Faraz going first. Puts, puts the Inquisitor down. But what is he going to guess? Okay. Um. Okay. Thanks for the heads up. I just, yeah, I'm not looking at the right screens here, obviously. <laughs> That's fine. Um, let me think about this for a second. Yeah, please. 
Did uh, did Faraz make a guess there? I'm not so sure. Let me see. He, uh, yes, Cena. He guessed the king's hand, and I'm thinking about <laughs> how to respond to that. Okay, great. Well, he could king's hand it. Yeah, he sure could. Uh, again, not knowing that the sentry's face down, uh, he doesn't know if there's another eight that he has to contest with. But I, I don't know why you would There's no reason this. why you would yeah. in this case, because you want the numbers pressure. In the last game, he certainly would have wanted to because of that unique situation where he would have had um, Dancing Frows have to play his princess. In this case, not so much. Yeah, exactly. I mean, basically, you're choosing between making Faraz play on an eight or making Faraz just take another turn playing whatever oh, card he gosh. wants. There's no advantage yeah. in that. I think what <gasps> Mr. Rogers is afraid of here is that he has no way to deal with the assassin if he gets rid of the king's hand. But it's not like he's going to get another opportunity. Um, so excellently played. And yeah, I think Mr. Rogers is just going to have to... The, the decision he has to make here, the only good side of king handing this is it forces Faro's Dancing Faro's to play another card um, if he was thinking that Dancing Faro's has it as a successor. Um, but we all know that Dancing Faro's actually has it in his hand, and there's nothing that Mr. Rogers can do except for some really skillful oathbound into fool plays in order to pick up something to help him along the way. And that, and that was always the weakness of Mr. Rogers' hand is, again, he has the king's hand as his one assassin proof. I'll let him ride. Good idea by him. Um, Let's see how this goes. If he flips his okay. king or plays Okey something dokey. big against it, he can just use his fool and pick up that oath bound, or sorry, that inquisitor to help him against that assassin. It looks like he's thinking about right. it. Uh... So he has two possible plays. He can play the queen or he can flip his king. Those are the only valid plays he has available to them, to him. That's correct. And one of them is going to help him. The other one's not unknowingly, which is Mr. Rogers' only play for survival here is to get the Oathbound full combo out or okay. to um, play just the, the fool to pick up the Inquisitor. If he plays the queen, that'll disgrace that Inquisitor. Um, and then it well, leaves I him will, less uh, I will flip my king. Okay. So Mr. Rogers has to play the fool and pick just up that Inquisitor. That. And if now it is your turn. This. But he may not know that that's the most important thing to do. With a six point lead, I would, might be cocky enough to actually flip uh, without thinking you know, he has the assassin at some point, but it was gonna cost him three points if he does that. Well, only two, the king's know. flipped. Ah, yes, now that the king is flipped, correct. And you know, maybe two point, you know, with six to play with, that actually might be the kind of thing that you can do. I wouldn't recommend anyone being as reckless as I am, but fool. this is the right thing, I think. He knows there's no king's hand. He can play the fool safely. He gets card advantage. An inquisitor. Now he has two two cards above okay. uh, dancing pharaohs. Because mm, dancing pharaohs went first. Board. Indeed it is. I will use my inquisitor. Double inquisitor here. The one that you didn't take, <laughs> obviously. Um. And I. Nothing really great for him to guess here. He could go for an assassin bluff. I think that'd be hilarious if he tried. I, would, I, I don't. I don't know if this is gonna be good or bad. <laughs> I don't know if this is gonna. Oh wait, no, never mind. Okay, it'll be bad either way. <laughs> okay. I think he's realizing uh, that if he draws right. a card, high card, um, he's gonna be in trouble. Yeah. Uh, I guess I will inquisit. Um, princess would seem to be the. I would make the princess guess here. Right. right. Gosh. Uh, you might be thinking sentry too. Sentry, of course, being the face down card. Let's card. see. Hmm. Oh, a tough spot here. You're a tough spot. I haven't. I've made one choice this whole game so far. <laughs> <laughs> it's a battering ram this turn. I mean, it's something. <laughs> it's a something. Uh, yeah, uh, let's... Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to inquire as to whether you have... 
Poor Dancing Frost hasn't even sung the full song yet. Um, you know, to be uh, fair to Faraz, this is a pivotal play gosh, here. Gosh, this is not fun. Um, <laughs> He's not in a great situation here. I, I feel for him. If you want, you can take that imp uh, uh, Inquisitor back and choose a different card. Uh, no, I'll keep it. I just... <laughs> I just, I just. I'm, uh, I'm just being gentlemanly. It's no, no. It's I, not being gentlemanly. He knows exactly um, what he's I'm doing. I'm just trying to figure out the best move here. This yeah. is the thing you have to fear yeah, about the top I don't know seed how here. Many best moves I have. Yeah, left. Mr. Rogers definitely um, feeling his oats at the moment. Up six nothing. Just one point between him and a trip to the finals with a win in hand. Damn. Please go ahead and take okay. the quiz of her uh, back. Well, with a six zero lead. Uh, let's. Uh, Let's go with an Oathbound. He is correct on that. God, I knew you were going to say that. Interesting guess. All right. So he certainly needs go. it, but it's still not over for All him. All right. So there's an Oathbound right there. <laughs> Clear as day. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, I will... He's still okay because he's still got the Elder. Do my he's to draw Warlord. It up to a Good number of pressure from Pharaohs, but I don't think it's going to be enough. Unless Mr. Rogers is shaken and thinks that... Well, actually, you know, Dancing Pharaohs has a successor now, so he probably thinks he has the assassin in his hand. Especially since uh, with two Inquisitors, Dancing Pharaohs never asked about it. Um, it's pretty clear that uh, it should be in his hand at this point. That's right. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure Mr. Rogers suspects strongly that Dancing Pharaohs has the assassin in his hand. The thing, right, is because of the full play, Mr. Rogers actually has enough cards. Oh, yeah. He, he could run Mr. Uh, ran, run Dancing Pharaohs out of cards uh, without running out himself and needing to flip his king. Absolutely correct. And He's that, got two plus two card advantage. One because um, Dancing Pharaohs went I'm first. I'm going to play the princess. Second because of the fool. And here comes that princess. Okay. Is he going to swap? question is, do I use its ability? That is the question. What would you do, Dan? Uh, let's see what he would want to trade away here. Um, he doesn't want to trade his Elder away. He can't trade his Elder or his Inquisitor, so the trade would be purely for a judge for something better. Yeah, and what he's going to get back, I would guess, is probably the Zealot, which is an improvement, although he wouldn't be able to use it anyway. It wouldn't do much. It wouldn't be a very material trade. Oh, no. He's thinking about trading his Inquisitor, maybe? He's putting his hand over it. Well, Tell think, me it's not true. I think maybe he's feeling like he doesn't need it. Uh-oh. But he does, Dan. We know. We know he needs it. I don't... Again, um, the way the card playing is working out, as long as he can keep numbers, uh, Faraz is going to run out of cards and have to play the assassin as a regular card before Mr. Rogers has to flip his king. He's thinking about it. He's putting his hand over his judge. This actually will spell disaster if he does trade the judge because right now, if all else equal, he actually wins with the calculation of either he plays the elder or the queen. Mr. Rogers can get that assassin out of his hand and he'll have advantage. But if he decides to trade, then there's a situation where he plays his elder and has to flip his king. Okay, like I'm not going to use his so. ability. All right. I think You're that's not. the right play. Okay. You guys can go back to the books and, and take a look at the, the stats here. Now it is up to Dancing Fouts. He's got two choices. He's got the queen. He's got the elder. Uh, in that case, both of them will lead to uh, Mr. Rogers. I'm going to play my queen. If played correctly, we'll see. The omniscient view is always easier. So, Here yeah, comes I mean, the queen. He's yeah. got the elder now, and then at this point, the next play that Dancing Fouts has is going to be either an elder or uh, a zealot. And at that point, he can safely inquisit and get that assassin out. That's right. All right. Unbeknownst to him, he can literally just win by playing the judge if I Dancing Crowds plays scared his scared of that elder. Zealot right now. <laughs> of course. <laughs> well, he has it in the bag. There, I don't think there's any play. Even if he just plays the Inquisitor as a four, and, uh, 
I don't see there being anything Dancing Faros can do because, again, of the way the cards run out. I will uh, also use this is my the right Elder. Thing in terms of trying to play the best you can, but it's still, as you said, an uphill stream. You're right. If he plays the four right now and doesn't guess anything, he wins uh, because then he can just play the Zella and then he plays his other remaining card. That's However, right. I would suspect that Mr. Rogers would probably want to get that Assassin out just in case that last card is a Sentry. Keep in mind, he does not know that that's not a Sentry, that's he true. thinks. That's true. He doesn't. And. You know, could be very uh, disconcerted by that because if that card was the sentry and not the zealot, that would force a king flip and he would lose this hand. But the funny thing is, and then if he knows that the last card's the assassin, he should play the inquisitor next without playing anything and without guessing. And that would get, yield a three point hand. Otherwise, it's a two point hand. Regardless, it's not going to matter. So there's only one thing that Will can do here, Mr. Rogers, and that's to flip his king in order to lose this game. <laughs> and we're talking about Mr. Rogers here, number one seed. We're not talking about um, other players who I was very close to name, but I'm not going to because that's too mean, I feel like. But uh, Yeah, Mr. Rogers would definitely have to be playing negative 90 chess to talk himself into the king flip, given yeah. how things are. Given everything that he's done, everything he's fought for, he I mean, if he's thinking he does have the century, he has to... Um, okay, I am going to Inquisit. Okay. Pharaohs, do you have a Zealot? Goes for the Zealot. Okay. I he, do have a he Zealot. Knows, he knows that he's... That. He knows okay. that he has the Assassin and realizes that go. that's the case, then he's going to win with this. And then... We'll see what you burn Three at the point end of your victory. Turn, or at the beginning of your turn. Again, the, the curious thing about this is how uh, Mr. Rogers so It's game over. I, I lost. <laughs> that the oh, my goodness. I thought you threw Carlos's away the assassin hand. or something. And he you thought he threw away the assassin and he had the century. Ah. Oh, my gosh. Every single game. Wow. I got three terrible hands and the century was the burn each time. Awesome. <laughs> I wouldn't blame the card hands on this oh, one. Man. Uh, I think there's I a couple of things they could have done honestly. better. Um, uh, yeah, this, this is the not players a talk first. Loss. You know, it's, it's exactly as I mentioned at the beginning. This one was all skill. It was a 50-50 setup between the two hands. I think Mr. Rogers just outplayed him. Yeah, I think so too. I think there's a couple of times where Dancing Pharaohs could have played a little bit more skillfully with the cards that he was given. Again, knowing the fact that we have Omniscient View, it's a little bit easier but the biggest issue is, is that this is not a numbers game. You know, it's not just whoever has the most numbers. As we saw with uh, Johnny Go when he was doing that brilliant, or sorry, uh, Dolan, who was doing that brilliant bluff where he pretended that the, the assassin was the face down card and he actually almost won even though he had a low end values of his cards. It's really about how you maximize each of the cards abilities rather than the actual numbers themselves. And I think Although I would say that Dancing Faros didn't have the best hands, he certainly didn't have any bad hands, I think. Um, there was one on the, la the last hand I would have mulliganed, but that was only because he was already down 6-0 in the meta. Otherwise, I would have gladly played all of those those hands. So, Well, there, there you have it. So Mr. Rogers wins the third hand again, a three-point hand, and it is a crown jewel of a match. Mr. Rogers, an immaculate match, three hands, three three-point victories. He'll take this one nine zip over dancing faraz who's going to have to lick his wounds in the lower bracket as part of the lower bracket finals mr rogers has punched his ticket for the finals tonight so normally again we do our hype wave after the fourth hand there will be no fourth hand tonight so i'm asking everyone in the chat again to get hype for the end of this match while we head back over to the broadcasting booth and start to interview the players tonight. See everyone back over there. Well, Cena, that one, I think from Dancing Faraz's perspective, did not go to plan. That was, uh, you know, for lack of a better term, it was a butt kicking. Uh, Mr. Rogers was unshaken each and every hand, never really ever looked to be in trouble, and three three-point victories to make it an immaculate match. That's right. I mean, that's really tough. I think in the first hand, we had the infinite loop of hmms as he was thinking about one of his plays, and it was a really pivotal part. But I think at that point, you can realize there's a lot of pressure on this winner's finals. There's a lot of pressures that you don't see, especially since we can see all the cards. 
And, um, you know, there, that, that pressure can really build up over time. Uh, and I think it caused Dancing Pharaohs to be a little bit more uh, lackadaisical with his plays uh, than we've seen previously. Uh, Mr. Rogers is not an easy opponent to play against because he will take any advantage he can get. And I think he did that just tonight. That's right. Mr. Rogers, the top seed coming into the tournament, has certainly justified that. Uh, winning three games, including two now by shutout. He looks unbeatable at the moment. Uh, if you were, say, one of the other members of the Final Four of this tournament, what are some chinks in the armor? Or is there any way to beat this guy? Yeah, I think there's two things that I would I would think about. One is he gets extremely flustered, like anyone else does, when you do something illogical. And not just illogical, but a good bluff. Um, so something that you know that you can kind of play with a, with a lesser hand, it can make him think a little bit too hard about the situation. However, if you bluff incorrectly, he's going to take advantage of that. And so you have to be really careful with those risks. I think the second thing is, is that he's not super used to, um, uh, I would say, non-standard play. And so being able to try to do things that are a little bit different uh, might throw him off just a little bit there. Got it. Yeah, sometimes not following the conventional wisdom might be the way through. And we'll see who's even in the position to do that because his next match is going to be the finals. He has punched grand his finals. ticket. The grand finals on Sunday. And uh, for Dancing Faraz, well, he descends into the lower bracket, but he's doing so in about the best way possible. He goes straight to the lower bracket finals to play the winner of our other remaining lower bracket match. So he's not out of this by any means. One more win, and he gets a rematch on Mr. Rogers, his challenge is going to be, he doesn't just have to beat Mr. Rogers once, he's going to have to do it twice in a row if he can get back into the finals. That's right. And I think the big thing here is essentially uh, when he comes down to this lower bracket, he's going to be in the finals. Um, he's going to be on the main stage again. And I think I know he's going to be watching this video. And the advice I have for him is, you know, don't worry too much about it. It doesn't have to be like, you know, perfect your plays. But at the same time, you know, think about what your strategies are going to be for those lower value hands uh, and get some reps in with the card abilities that are a little bit because you're going to inevitably get lower value hands uh, in, in this tournament. And it's a bummer sometimes and other times it plays out magnificently. Yep. And that would be I mean, if there is any advice, I think that's a good piece of advice. I think another good piece of advice is, uh, yeah, hands have hidden aspects to them that you should focus on. And they can help you minimize losses as well as wins. So even a hand that might be terrible, might be maroon in the middle, still has a lot of good survivor cards that might let you turn a three-point loss into a one-point loss. If you can play your Zealots and your, and your Oathbounds and your Inquisitors at the right time, you can run away and give yourself time to get the good hands. But if you're getting three-pointed, you're not going to survive long enough to get good hands. Yeah, absolutely. And we're joined here now with Dancing Faraz. Dancing Faraz, thanks for joining us. Tough night, Dancing Faraz. You know, again, we were just talking about, uh, you know, what a challenge Mr. Rogers can provide. I know it was a kind of a quick outing tonight, uh, but you're not out of the tournament. Uh, any lessons you're taking from tonight for your trip down to the lower bracket? Uh-oh. He's muted. We can't hear you. Now he's gone. Second here. You there, Dancing okay. Faraz? Still can't hear you, unfortunately. Nope. How about now? I, all right. Yeah, we can. Here we, we go. We're in business. There so, we go. so again, just just to repeat the question there. So, you know, again, a tough night tonight. Mr. Rogers, uh, everything seemed to break his way. Any lessons you're taking from this match into your trip into the lower bracket? Yeah, don't play Mr. Rogers again. <laughs> uh, I, mean, I, did, I knew I knew that he would. I knew that he was one of the best players. Uh, I just couldn't believe that that was coupled with uh, three terrible hands and three centuries being burned. Uh, so yeah, you know. Well, Talk speaking of the three centuries being burned, the first game the century wasn't burned. It was actually in your hand, and you made the decision oh, to. Right. Well, no, no, it's fine. It's but what happened is you inevitably burned it yourself by playing that mystic into eights. Um, what was your thought process on doing that? Uh, to be honest with you, uh, I was just I was really heavily putting my hopes into the assassin, just try to get him to flip his king. Uh, I felt like my cards weren't strong enough 
to uh, do much else. And uh, I think with uh, with Mr. Rogers, uh, I, I really just wanted to kind of surprise him with the assassin. Uh, it obviously didn't work. So uh, I guess I was the one who was, wait for it, assassinated. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to say the fool and then sing the song. Oh, but... I see. Yeah, come on. <laughs> I know I got the fool on my like first hand. I couldn't even play it. I wanted to sing so bad. And Will doesn't even. And Mr. Rogers doesn't even know this song. Ah, oh, I'm sorry, Galantis. I've let you down tonight. <laughs> uh, you can always send him the song. Uh, <laughs> I think right. he would willingly sing it for you. I think. Uh, yeah. So now that you're heading down to the losers bracket, you're going to go into the grand finals for the. Or sorry, the the finals for the losers bracket. Uh, either between Juno Balls and Shane. Um, is there anything that you're going to do to prep for that? Or are you going to watch the game tomorrow? Uh, yeah, I'll probably actually I'll probably watch the VOD instead of the game live. I have some other stuff going on, but uh, I know it's Juno Balls against Shane. I know that Juno Balls. I played him uh, my previous match and won. Uh, Shane. I know that Shane and Juno Balls played the very first match, um, and uh, and Juno Balls came back uh, from a five zero deficit to win seven uh, five. So it'll be interesting to see if Shane. Uh, wins overtakes Juno Balls this time, or uh, if uh, if Juno Balls learned his lesson, or you know continues on, and then it's a rematch for second place. <laughs> you've got a couple. You got a couple rematches potentially here. One with potentially Juno Balls, and the other with Mr. Rogers. With Mr. Rogers being in the grand finals as the winner, you're gonna have to beat him twice. Um, is there anything you're gonna think about in terms of? Yeah. <laughs> is there anything you're gonna do in order to try to prep for um, those two matches potentially? If you win the first, or are you gonna try a, like a crazier strategy for the first just to see if it works? Try to throw him off his game, or? I think I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna binge watch a bunch of anime if I'm gonna be coming back and <laughs> trying to beat people multiple times. Well, I, I've got bad news for you, hero. Dancing Faraz, but it didn't work for Sasuke. His his story arc, uh, <laughs> unfortunately, uh, hit budget problems and had to terminate early. They're gonna have to make a movie later on that fixes and finishes all the parts that didn't get I think done. There's in the probably TV like series. two direct to to film uh, situations <laughs> oh, no. there. Oh so. no. <laughs> All right. Well, um, thank you so much for, for joining us. Uh, sorry to see you have to get knocked down to the loser's bracket, but at least you're going into the loser's finals. Um, so you're, you will be well rewarded for uh, being able to take it so far into the winner's bracket. Yeah, I was just trying to make it into the top three. Uh, and you're guaranteed. And I'm guaranteed, baby, which means... I get to do this once again. I didn't know that that's what that gave you. That wasn't written anywhere, but okay. <laughs> the Z. The Z. All right, well, th thank you, Dancing Faraz. Uh, you you want to keep that Z up while I boot you from the meeting? Yes, I do. Thank you, Sina. Thank you, Dan. Thank Have you, Dancing night, Faraz, with your trademark Z. We'll see you again on Saturday night. So, all right, well, you know, there it is, Dancing Faraz. Unfortunately, there's no way for him to win this tournament without a rematch with Mr. Rogers, and not only will he have to win that rematch, he's going to have to win twice. You know, there's everything he's got to do is just bone up, go through the anime training montage, and see everything he can do. Yep, that's right. And I think he just left the Discord, and he also just flipped the table. So uh, I think he did a peace out Z, and we're good to go. Uh -huh. um, next up, we have our winner for tonight. Uh, Mr. Rogers, we'll see how he is feeling after that 9-0 performance. I dare say the first 9-0 and the first 9-point win, as well as the first, uh, yeah, I mean, there's lots of firsts, actually. I think, oh, and he even shaved for the occasion here. Wow, look at that, clean shaven. So, Mr. Rogers, again, congratulations. As we were just mentioning, it's the first immaculate victory in Imposter Kings tournament history. Three hands, three three-point victories, a perfect 9-0 drubbing. Imagine you're pretty happy after that one. Well, I, you know, everything sort of went my way that time. Um, I got just an amazing hand the first round. Um, I was I was feeling the pressure on that last one. Um, I, I was playing it. I thought that he still had that sentry in his hand and was trying uh, desperately to wiggle out of a trap that didn't exist. Um, and then the middle one, uh, he just tossed his, uh, got a little cocky with his um, king flip there, uh, forgetting that the uh, assassin sometimes does stay around at the beginning. So, 
Yeah, um, I mean, I said time and time again that uh, people sometimes don't respect the assassin, especially when it's in your hand, um, because it does suck when you try to inquisit it and you don't hit the assassin. But in that case, it was really costly for him. Um, so going into that third match, uh, you were playing very cautiously. You didn't flip your king because you still kept the possibility that he had the assassin in his hand. Were you thinking that there potentially could have been an assassin? Is that why you held on for so long? Or were you trying to wait until literally the last moment where you had to do like a 50-50, whether it's a sentry or an assassin? Um, I considered flipping my king early on the expectation that he would have, um, that he would have basically tried to hide it, expecting me to inquisit it out. Um, or not inquisit it out, but, um, uh, get information about it with something else, but um, it's yeah, the judge. I, you can say you can say the judge. It's okay. I mean, it's yeah. it's a card. Everyone loves it. Don't know why anyone <laughs> don't say that it's the judge. Go ahead. I I mean, I was re gonna rely on that judge to get my last card out there uh, up until I realized that he probably was still holding onto the assassin uh, in the last in the last minute and realized that I needed to basically. Um, get some information about his hand at the end there. Um, but I was expecting him to have the assassin there, and so I was holding off. I also just didn't have a lot of choices to make. If I ever wanted to play cards from my hand and do anything to reverse the momentum, uh, I was either going to king flip early without knowing about it, or I was going to just sit there and take all of the, you know, inquisitors. Um, and, you know, I took the opportunity to get that fool out and get card advantage, which I, which uh essentially yeah got it for me right um so i think i went pretty well but right we, we mentioned that that card advantage was a big deal there because it meant you were never under pressure where you would just have run out of cards and then done a king flip by default uh one uh question that came Delay up here oh, well, there we go. i'm back i'm back so we lost oh, you for sorry, a second yeah, there, Dan. I missed, sorry I, missed I, everything after under pressure okay so uh yeah we it, it, yeah. Hello? Think we're uh, still experiencing the Comcast doing Comcastic things on the stream. I apologize for that for everyone who can still hear me. Anyway, I can still hear you guys, and I think you can hear me now. Uh, but right under pressure, so that uh, card advantage element was everything because it meant you weren't going to run out of cards before and, and have to flip your king as a result of running out of cards, and uh, that made a lot of difference in that hand. One thing we were talking about there. Uh, was around how one plays differently when you have a big big advantage. So when you're up six nothing, did you find yourself thinking about potentially playing more aggressively, knowing that you had a cushion, you can maybe do things like flip a king into an assassin, knowing you've got that cushion? Um, I was considering it. I, I did know that if I met, didn't didn't get that find that round, it wasn't that big a deal i could still play conservatively and he was still two game wins away from uh taking it so it was comforting but it is always still you still feel the pressure even if you're not going to um you know lose immediately on it when uh you you, you don't have a lot to do against someone who's just you know takes out your only defense in the first play of the game and you didn't even get to choose who went first so yeah, he seemed kind of bummed out about the, the Inquisitor into King's hand a couple times there. Well, And I would have oh. picked, left it to pick it up with the Fool later if I didn't think he had the Century. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, Mr. Rogers, Immaculate play, 9-0. We usually attribute Immaculate to Juno Balls, but tonight was a 9-0 a, you know, shutout uh, in the winner's final. A pretty strong ticket over to the winner's finals, uh, sorry, the grand finals, where... Uh, they're going to have to beat, beat you twice, essentially. Um, so congratulations again, and a welcome to making it to at least the top two. Oh, it's been, it's been a lot of fun. I'm really enjoying it, and I'll see you guys on Sunday. Well, before you go, Mr. Rogers, so one question here just to stir the pot. So again, there's three potential folks still in a tournament that you'll run into in the finals. There's Juno Balls, there's Shane, and then there's a rematch with Dancing Faraz. Who are you most afraid of out of those three? Which of those three would you least want to see in that finals match? Uh, it's tough to say. Uh, I think that Juno Balls probably has the most uh, technically proficient play. Like his his moves are always spot on. 
Um, but um, then that makes it easy to guess around what it is. Um, Faraz is still a bit of an enigma to me, where uh, I was expecting things that didn't uh, end up happening. Um, you know, mostly he ended up with bad draws and was, you know, maybe playing as best as he could off to go watch the video on demand and see what that looked like from his perspective in the moments. But um, he still confounds me the most. Um, he did mystic his own eight <laughs> in the first hand. I was certain if he'd if he'd have gotten me with that just because I expected he didn't have the century, uh, that would have been a case where not expecting something like that would really mess you up, and it just didn't end up playing that way because my hand was so strong. Right. And then what about Shane? Did you have anything to say about Shane? We don't. We, none of us really have much to say about Shane, but in <laughs> case you had something that you wanted to say there, uh, I think Shane's a great player. Um, <laughs> he's he also does some things that are a little. Uh, less expected, but I'm, I understand them a little better. Um, but he also probably wouldn't do some, he's not going to do something crazy, like just flip his king and expect me not to have the thing. So um, I don't know. I think it's a strong lineup, and I'll be very interested to see who I'm playing against. All right. Well, thank you again, Mr. Rogers. Congratulations on an immaculate night. You're through to the finals. <laughs> we will see you Sunday evening at 6.30 p.m. Pacific and whomever you draw out of those three, they're going to have to beat you twice. So they've got a tall mountain to climb. We wish you the best. All right. Well, thanks, you guys, and uh, looking forward to it. Thank you. All right. Well, it's been an exciting night. Folks are uh, punching out for the night. Just a couple of things to, uh, to close out the night on. First, let's just take a quick look at the bracket. Uh, so, right with this match, Mr. Rogers advances onto the finals. Dancing Faraz drops to play the winner of the Juno Balls Shane match, which is tomorrow night at 9 p.m. Pacific. So, Sina, in terms of what's left in the schedule, we have that match, 9 p.m. Friday night Pacific. Then we've got the lower bracket finals, Dancing Faraz against the winner of that match, which will be Saturday night at 9. And then the grand finals at 6.30 p.m. Pacific on this channel uh, on Sunday. Anything we should be looking out for before we punch out for the night? I mean, it's uh, it's winding down. I mean, we have only a couple nights left, and I would have thought that I would have been exhausted by now, but boy, am I still excited to see what's going to happen tomorrow. Tomorrow's going to be the rematch between Juno Balls and Shane. Shane coming out swinging, saying a bunch of... Uh, nice things about Juno Balls, and Juno Balls actually saying nice things back to his opponent. Um, they've been close friends forever. Shane feels like he uh, he should have won that first game. Juno Balls is going to repost with potentially saying, no, I have the consistent play to order in order to actually take this. It's going to be fierce tomorrow. I think tomorrow's going to be a really great match to watch. And then whoever wins that has to play against Dancing Faraz, um, which we just saw. He's a confounding player sometimes. He, when given, when getting the momentum, you can't let him get momentum. He's like Soda Popinski in uh, Punch Out. You cannot uh, let him hit you once. Otherwise, it's going to be lights out for you. And then finally, whoever wins all of that has to face against Mr. Rogers in two matches that they have to win in order to climb that mountain. And I think it's going to be really great to see what kind of strategies people are going to pull out for the grand finals. All right. Well, a lot of things to look forward to. I, too, am feeling excited for the last few matches here because they're going to be packed with excitement. It's been a great tournament so far. It's going to be a great finish. Again, for everyone who's out there, the next match is tomorrow night on this same channel, 9 p.m. Pacific. Want to catch you there. It's 100% unmissable. And for everyone who stayed on from Super Quiz, thank you so much for staying on and watching some Imposter Kings action. I want to wish everyone a great night, a safe Friday. We'll see you tomorrow night. Good night, everyone. Thank you, everyone.